Hey guys, Brad from Trail Recon here. You know, a lot of my friends carry all kinds of equipment in their Jeeps. They're ready for getting stuck, uh, if anything breaks down, they've got all kinds of toe straps and tools and kind of recovery gear. But what a lot of people don't think about is, you know, when we're out on the trail off-roading, there's a lot of hazards out there and you could really injure yourself. And an essential piece of equipment that needs to be in every off-road vehicle really is a first aid kit. And so what I'd like to do is I'm gonna start a series and this is gonna be the first episode in that series where we're gonna talk about trail first aid and give you some uh, good tips and some things I can teach you and from my experience as being a corpsman in the Navy and hopefully share that with you and then maybe if somebody gets hurt out there you'll be able to help them out. So the first thing we need to start with is the basics. Let's talk about a first aid kit. So when I was deployed to Fallujah, Iraq, uh, I used to go outside the wire with the EOD unit and I carried a lot of medical gear, a lot of trauma gear, a lot of advanced first aid equipment. Uh, this is a great bag. Uh, it's a, uh, I can do just about anything I need to with this thing, but this isn't what everybody needs to carry in their off-road vehicle because most of the stuff here the average person just isn't familiar with. Uh, in a bug out situation, uh, I'm grabbing this and I'm throwing it in the back. But what most folks do is they go down to their local store and they pick up a first aid kit. And this is definitely better than having nothing at all. But at the end of the day, these basic first aid kits really just have some band-aids, some big gauze in there, help you take care of some scraped knees, uh, some lacerations, uh, there's some drugs in here for a headache, that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's really not the kind of a first aid kit that everybody should carry to kind of diversify and be able to handle many situations. So let me show you what I carry in my Jeep. What I have here is a bag uh, from 511. And this bag is a great little bag. It's got a Molly system on it, although I don't use the Molly system. I just use some double-sided Velcro and I just strap that around the roll bar in the back of the Jeep uh, and it holds up just well. Uh, and everything that inside this kit is stuff that I've put in there. It doesn't come with anything. So you have to pick and choose what you want. So at the end of this video, go check the description. I'm gonna put uh, all kinds of information about everything that I have in here so you can build your own first aid kit. So let's break this open and I'll show you what I got. The first thing that I really like about this bag is how easy it is to open. You've got these little drawstrings you just roll it right open, folds open very nicely. And then the bag has some really nice mesh, which allows you to see inside the bag of what's you got on each side, just in case you have it upside down or whatever. Uh, very nice setup. What I've got here attached to one of these strings is some forceps. Forceps are a great little tool to have in a first aid kit. You know, if you need to clamp off a wound, uh, pull some debris out of something, these are just nice to have. I recommend putting those in your kit. On this side over here, the first thing you'll see on top is some trauma shears. And the reason I have trauma shears on the top is because if you've got a fracture or a major wound, the first thing you wanna do is get somebody's clothes off. And these will cut through clothes like butter. Uh, they'll cut through jeans very, very well. Uh, these will even not cut through a penny, I know because I've tried. So having some trauma shears you can rip somebody's clothes off with quickly, uh, very nice to have. Got some alcohol pads. Alcohol pads are good to have just so you can clean up a wound. And then I've got a whole bunch of gauze in here. Got some two by two gauzes, which are just small for smaller wounds. Got some regular band-aids. I've got some uh, Telfa pads, and Telfa pads are non-sticking, so you put them on a wound and they won't actually stick to it. So if you have to change the bandage, it'll come off nice and smooth. And then I have a lot of four by four gauzes. And the reason I have a whole bunch of these is, you know, if you've got a wound that just keeps bleeding and bleeding, you're gonna wanna keep adding and adding four by four gauzes. It's important to have more than just a couple of these in your bag. Then what I have is some steri strips or wound closure strips. Uh, these come in a variety of different uh, mediums. You can get them smaller, they come in little packages. Uh, these are great for uh, closing a wound. I mean, you're not gonna wanna suture out on the trail, but this is the next best thing. It's just you tape up that wound, you hold the skin together really well, works perfectly. And so I recommend you have uh, some kind of wound closure uh, in your kit. Then I have a whole assortment of medications in here. and. Uh, the first two things I'll pull out are uh, just some bacitracin ointment, just so you have some antibiotic to put on the Band-Aid if you give it. Got some hydrocortisone, so if somebody gets a rash, you know, they rub up against something, uh, have a reaction to something, you can treat that with some hydrocortisone. And then I've got a few pills. Got some Imodium, in case somebody has some diarrhea while they're out on the trail. Got some Tums, so you know, you can get folks to have heartburn. 
I've got some Motrin, which is great for pain relief and for swelling. So if somebody has sprains an ankle or whatever, this is going to help reduce the swelling. And you'll see here that I label these and I put the expiration date. That's just because I'm a little OCD. Uh, I've got some Tylenol and then I've got some Benadryl. And Benadryl is really good to have. Uh, it's nice to have some kind of antihistamine. If somebody has an allergic reaction, uh, I recommend you put some Benadryl in your kit. And then the bottom here, I have what's called a SAM splint. And a SAM splint, for those of you who aren't familiar, is just a thin piece of aluminum covered by some foam. And this is great for bracing fractures. And it doesn't look like it, right? Well, if you fold this in half and then you give it a little concave contour to it, what you can do is it becomes really rigid and really stiff. And then you can uh, secure a fracture with this and you know when we're out in the desert there's not a whole lot of trees or branches to use so it's really nice to have one of these when there's not a lot of other options uh, and then I've got some tweezers down here and those are always just good to have general purpose tweezers on the other side of the bag I've got a pulse oximeter and what this does is you stick this on somebody's finger and that's going to give you a quick reading of what somebody's pulse is and their oxygen concentration. So if they're breathing well, if their blood is circulating, just a little bit of vital signs. For me, that's important to know that the patient's stable. I'm doing something else. I just throw this on their finger. Uh, easy day. You can pick these up on Amazon. Relatively cheap. 20 or 30 bucks. They're not very expensive. Got some ace wraps and some clean gauze. Ace wraps are great for, you know, attaching uh, the SAM splint or just a sprained ankle, all kinds of stuff. Great to have those. And the clean gauze is like an ace wrap, but it's really sticky and that works really well. Next thing I have in here is a cravat or a triangular bandage. Comes with a couple little safety pins. These are great. If you have somebody that has a shoulder injury or an arm fracture, or really uh, you can think of all kinds of things to do it, but you can, you can sling somebody's arm with this. Um, you can do all kinds of things with this, wrap it around their head, whatever you needed to, but it's just great to have one of these in your kit because you can really find a lot of uses for, for that. So I recommend you put one of those in there. Just some Curlex. Curlex is just a long gauze. It's rolled up. You can wrap around the head. You can wrap around all kinds of wounds. Good stuff. This is a battle dressing. A battle dressing is just a big bulky dressing with some straps attached to it. These come in many different shapes and sizes. Uh, I'm not going to open this one up, but I, you know, I recommend you have one in there because it makes it easy. If you got a wound, bam, you just throw that on there and tape it off and then you, you got something on there right away that's quick and easy. Uh, I carry silk tape in my first aid kit and I, uh, over years and years of experience, silk tape just is better. There's the plastic tape, there's paper tape. Those just don't stick well to uh, wet or bloody or sweaty skin. The silk tape just adheres well and it's gonna stay there. So I recommend going with the silk tape. And the last thing I have in here is a tourniquet. And we're not gonna go in depth today about the tourniquet, but I recommend every kit have a tourniquet. And as we go further into this first aid series, I'm gonna show you how and when uh, to use this. All right guys, so that is the first aid equipment that I take with me on every trail run. Uh, I think it's perfect for my needs. Uh, you obviously can add or delete any supplies or equipment that you want from this bag to tailor it to yourself and I encourage you to do that. But I will put a, a link in the description about all the stuff that's inside this bag and give you some ideas about how you want to build your own first aid bag. Uh, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, and Look, we're going to continue on with this first aid stuff. So we're going to start talking about some injuries and how to use these supplies. If you're not a subscriber, man, hit that subscribe button. We really appreciate it. And that way, when we post those videos, you'll get to see them right away and you get to learn some good first aid skills. Uh, and if you got questions about anything you saw here in the video today, uh, go ahead and ask us in the comments. I'll get right back to you. I really appreciate all the comments uh, and I really appreciate all the viewers, guys. So thanks for watching. Until next time, we'll see you out on the trail.